So it's Criterion sale time. I went to Barnes & Noble a couple days ago. I have seven titles here that I'm going to pretty much just show you and tell you what I got because as usual, I feel like with most Criterion haul videos, it's like, I don't know that much about this. Not even just me, like everyone I watch for the most part, unless they're picking up something that they've already seen before. Um, that's just the way it goes. <laughs> we all like blind buying, don't we? Yeah, so I have seven titles here uh, that I'm going to show you. I also made an online order, so I have four more titles coming. They haven't shipped yet. I don't, it, as long as they're coming, so that's fine. I just don't know when. So let's just get started. I'm going in order of, I think this is still like stacked in the order of just like how I pick them up at the store. So first I have The Exterminating Angel from 1962. This is directed by Louis Buñuel and is spine number 459. I think this has something to do with a dinner party and the guests are unable to leave. And I don't know any other details other than that. So... Um, also, my brother and his girlfriend are watching a movie, and I'm hoping you can't hear it. This is actually one of the titles that when I first got into Criterion, it like really caught my eye, but I never ended up picking it up. But now I have it, so excited to get to that and all of these. The second title I got is Le Petit Soldat from 1963, directed by Jean-Luc Godard, and this is spine number 1010. This is the first title I have that's in the thousands spine number range. And I have seen this before, I've only seen a couple of these. This is more so one of Godard's political films, but I still feel like it has a good amount of character to it as well involved in the plotline. Uh, some of his films are mostly political and it's pretty much just following the political beliefs of the characters. If you're getting like the differentiation I'm trying to make there. This one has political aspects but also has characters. I don't know their names but it has to do with the male main character being infatuated with Anna Karina's character but he's really involved in uh, the in the political scene in the area and that's all I can remember really in terms of plot um, but I think that the I could be wrong on this, but I think that the main character is sort of like a surrogate? <laughs> there has to be a better word than that. Um, sort of like represents Godard himself. Um, there's a lot of... I, this, the most memorable scenes in this are when... Again, I don't know the main character's name, but he's, <laughs> he's like taking pictures of Anna Karina's character and it's just... It's very symbolic because that was also kind of the way that Godard felt about Karina. Like, because this was technically filmed in like 1960 or 1961 before they were married. Yes, I think I'm remembering all the information correctly. I will um, clarify anything in the description if I need to. Uh, and then I also got Weekend from 1967, another Jean-Luc Godard film. This is spine number 635, and this is the other film that I've seen. And now I only have two Vapien to get in terms of the titles that are currently in print um, that are directed by Godard. I have all of them, including at least one out of print title on Criterion. Um, and I'm so happy, I'm so happy Pierre Le Fou is coming back. It's coming back. I don't really like the cover that much, I like the old one better, but at least it's coming back. That's great. <laughs> and Weekend is the film that has that famous car crash scene where it's it's basically a car crash and then a pile up and just a lot of traffic behind. So, uh, and this one I feel like you're just following these this married couple and that's kind of all that's happening. <laughs> or at least that's all I remember. Um, both of these I haven't seen in like seven or seven years, I think. One of these days, someday, <laughs> not soon, I am going to do a marathon maybe of Godard's films and do a ranking video. And then I also got The Executioner from 1963. This is directed by Louis, Louis or Luis? Luis Garcia Berlanga. That's how I'm going to pronounce it. You can see. <laughs> Uh, this is spine number 840. This is a Spanish film. And what I know about this is that it's about a man who 
he's either married or engaged, and uh, he's taking over the job of his wife or fiance's father, um, who is the executioner, and so he becomes the executioner, but he doesn't want to, and this is a comedy as far as I can remember. So, um, and also I'm kind of assuming that because he's like carrying ice cream <laughs> and I've heard great things about this and that's all I know about it. I also really like the pink cover. We don't, ha we don't have a lot of pink covers. Yeah. And then the fifth title I got is another French film. By the way, I don't know if I, have I been specifying? I mean, I know I just said the executioner is in Spanish and Godard is French. The first film though. Is this in French or- it's in Spanish. It's Spanish. The Exterminating Angel is Spanish. Then here I have another French film. Ooh, lots of reflection. Uh, Jean Delman, Bentois, Quai du Commerce, 1080, Bruxelles. I always forget 80. Always forget. It's 80. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this follows Jean Delman for- I don't know how long, but I know that the film is extremely long and you're pretty much just following her everyday life as a housewife, pretty much, um, as a mother, doing stuff. Oh, and turning the occasional trick. You know, the usual. So, looking forward to this. It's- I also really like long movies, so I'm hoping that that is in my favor. And I also got The Music Room from 1958, directed by Satyajit Ray. I used to pronounce his name incorrectly, so I have to make sure that I get it right. This is spine number 573. Did I tell you the spine number of this? Spine number of John Dillman is 484. I don't know how many of you are interested in the spine numbers, but I like saying the spine numbers. And I don't know anything about this. I assume music will be involved. And a music room. I love music. If you don't know, music is my favorite thing. On the whole planet, in the world, ever. Music. And then finally, the seventh film that I got is Husbands, directed by John Cassavetes from 1970, and it is spine number 1029. Uh, one of the titles that I for sure wanted to get is Love Streams because I watched I don't I don't want to like misremember her name I'm not gonna say it because I think it's wrong but I watched this girl's video um, talking about her Criterion collection and Love Streams is one of the films that she has it's her favorite film John Cassavetes is her favorite director and I think Jenna Rollins is her favorite actress and just the way that she was talking about Love Streams I was like okay the next sale that's the title I'm for sure going to get. So that's one of the titles that I've ordered. And I saw Husbands at the store and I was like, you know what, let's get this one too. Um, and I think that means I have all of the Cassavetes films in terms of what he's directed. Because I know he acts in a couple more that he didn't direct. But I think it's like the five film set, Husbands and Love Streams the seven films. This probably has to do with husbands <laughs> and family relations, which is how John Cassavetes films usually go. It's all about, they're very character driven. It's, you're just following the characters. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching this one and love streams. I recently, well somewhat recently, <laughs> what is recently anymore? What is time? A couple months ago maybe, maybe it was May, I rewatched A Woman Under the Influence and um, so I feel like having rewatched that recently, or at least recently enough, it'll be nice, like, jumping back into Cassavetti's films not too long afterwards. Did that make sense? <laughs> I also, by the way, um, I tried, like, recording a sort of movie vlog. Like, I was, I wanted to rewatch a handful of films, and so I kind of recorded clips, but... Then there were times where I had, like, nothing to say, and then there were times that I, like, just sat down and talked for, like, 20 minutes, and I just feel like that's a lot. <laughs> so, I don't know what I'm doing with that footage, if I will actually make a movie vlog, because it's from, like, a couple months ago at this point, but I don't know. It's still relevant in terms of, like, I watched those movies again, and 
then I talked about them. So I don't know. I just thought I would mention it. <laughs> okay. Um, so those were the seven films that I got so far. So far. Here's, here's my stack. Wait, <laughs> let's cover up Suho's face. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, and I have four more coming, and I don't know if I'm gonna make any more purchases, like, online or in the store. Again, like, inventory's been kind of fluctuating a lot, pretty much. There is one title that I didn't end up getting because it was out of stock online, and if it comes back in stock, again, I, I could just wait for another sale, so I'm good for now, but we still have a couple of weeks, I think, until the sale's over, so who knows? Maybe I'll change my mind. Um, I think that's it, though. I'd love to know what you think about these films that I picked up. What are you picking up? What's on your wish list? Thank you for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!